In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson explains why and how we get rewards or punishments. He also explains how you can regulate your emotions. So anyways, up pops the little module that says, state A, you're, you don't have enough food, your blood sugar is too low. State B, solve that by having a peanut butter sandwich. You know, it's context, it's context specific. Solve it by eating. Okay, now what that has done is set up the framework for satiation. Okay, now satiation is a kind of reward. Now, you, you might think that satiation is the kind of reward that everyone wants, because that's actually what people think. You know, they think that what you want is to get to your goal. And generally, we presume that getting to your goal is rewarding. But it's a funny kind of reward, because actually, because it's a consumatory reward, which is a particular kind of reward. It has its own circuitry. The consumatory reward just shuts off the system that was pursuing it. That's the consequence. So the drive goes away. It's a funny reward, right? Because you stop being impelled by the drive. You're kind of happy about that. But all that happens is that system sinks and poof, up pops another one. So consumatory reward is a strange kind of reward because it's never really final. And all it does is shut down the part of you that wanted it. So, okay, so that's consumatory reward. And that's important to remember. You'll see why after a while. Now. Imagine what could happen as you move towards the consumatory reward. So here's, here's some rough things that could happen. The things that you're doing could work in the way you want them to work. Okay, and so that's kind of the no-hassle situation. You know, you go downstairs, you open the cupboard, the peanut butter's there, you make a sandwich, you eat it, and then you go back to study. Pretty not exciting, you know. It's like, it's a boring story. And that's the kind of story you want to inhabit most of the time. You want the things that you know how to do to produce the results that you want to produce to work. And that basically keeps your emotions regulated. So, now that we understand this A to B movement, and we understand how the underlying biological subsystems modulate that, now we can start to think about emotion. All right, so... As you're walking towards your goal, you're evaluating what happens as you walk. And as long as the things that you want to have happen are happening while you walk, then your dopaminergic system, which is the source of incentive reward, which is the second kind of reward, your dopamine system is going, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. And you kind of like that. It keeps you alert. You know you're on the right track. And it reinforces that behavior. Because your body assumes that if the thing that you're doing is working, then the circuit that does that should get a little stronger and a little more well-developed because it's producing the desired outcome. And I think you feel good about that. And I think the reason you feel good about that is because your brain is actually, like it's in a state of growth. It's producing chemicals that help your brain grow. And I think it's the feeling of that that you have as a positive feeling. Now, how you feel that, I don't know. But why wouldn't you feel that? It's like the thing you're doing is working. It should thrive. And so you're pretty happy about that. And that's like mild level positive emotion. It's, I know what I'm doing. You know, so that's one thing that can happen. Things that you expect or predict. It's expect if you use a pure cognitive model. It's desire if you use a model that incorporates motivation. Because Sokolov and Vinogradova, and to some degree Gray, kind of thinks about the brain as something that predicts and expects. You know, so as long as what you expect to happen is happening, then you stay calm. But there's, a, there's an error in that, and the error is, well, you don't just expect things, you want them. Right, and, and you're always aiming at something specific, and it's the biological systems that underlie motivation that are specifying that. So you can't think of yourself as a cold calculating expectancy machine cognitive expectancy machine, because you're not like that. You want things. Okay, so you're moving along towards your target, and the things that you want to have happen are happening, and the cues that you're approaching the target are appearing as they should be, and your dopamine system, which is grounded, by the way, in half of the hypothalamus. So half of the hypothalamus is devoted towards popping up these little bubbles that tell you what you should want and how to get them, and the other half is devoted to exploring and to 
mostly to exploring and to paying attention. Okay, so, and it'll be ticking along just quite nicely as long as what you're doing is working. But then we'll say, well, what if what you're doing isn't working? What if, uh, what if you get to the cupboard and you open it and your little brother has eaten all the peanut butter? Well, what you get then is a mismatch. It's like, instead of the presence of the peanut butter, you get the absence of the peanut butter. And that's actually a stimulus. It's so cool. The absence of a desired entity is a, is a punishment. It's a punishment. So that's pretty abstract, right? I mean, it's pretty abstract punishment. It's like a hole where there shouldn't be a hole will produce an orienting response and frustrate you and make you aggressive and irritated and all those sorts of things. And so, and you're going to feel that negatively. Now, that's interesting. That's a punishment. That's a punishment. Now, if you had suspicions that the peanut butter might be missing when you were opening the door, that would make you anxious. Because anxiety, fear, more particularly, fear is the expectation that a punishment might occur. And you have a separate, interesting, even though it's, it's in relationship to a punishment, which you might think of as a, as a primary, um, unconditioned stimulus, right? It's an unconditioned stimulus because you, you, naturally, you naturally respond to it. Fear, which could be considered a conditioned stimulus, actually has its own circuit. It's so common that, that, that what we want might not be there, that we've evolved a whole circuit just to deal with things that are threatening, as well as things that are punishing. Punishment, pain. Threat, anxiety. Threat is threat of punishment. So it's an abstract form of, it's an abstract representation of punishment. You're anxious so that you don't get hurt. Now you might say, I'm so damn anxious, I don't, I'd rather have the hurt, but no you wouldn't. It's like, it's a lesser price to pay. It's a, it's a lesser pain to avoid a greater pain. That's really what anxiety is. So the next time you're anxious, you should be happy about that because at least you're not in pain, which is what the anxiety is trying to protect you from. Okay, so you're going towards your goal. And one thing that could happen is that things that you want to have happen are happening and things that you want to have appear are appearing. And so you get a little dopamine kick from the hypothalamus and that makes you feel like you're you know, on the right track, which is exactly how it makes you feel. Because we're trajectory-oriented animals, and just like an anti-missile missile, we're always trying to hit a moving target. And so if you're on the right trajectory, then everything, everything about the way you've organized your brain at that moment is functional, and so your brain pumps up a little bit of neurochemical to make those areas of the brain that are involved in that productive activity grow a little bit, and you think, hey, things are going pretty good for me. So that's pretty cool. 